Check, check, check. Welcome back to the Young OG Perspective, where we give you a new perspective. A fresh perspective. A Young OG Perspective, baby. Yup. You know what it is. It's the fresh kid with the beard and no fear, man. And like I said, if I'm the CEO, this gentleman to my left (laughs) is the CFO. Shut up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll try to, I had to hit him with the R. Kelly. Shut up. Okay. Like I said, if this, sorry, the, the, the room is just, I'm calm. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm bomb bull and collective. Okay. Whoa, bro. So that's way check too it many out. For me, like, man. like I said, if I'm the CEO, this gentleman to my left is the CFO. Financial. You know what I mean? He goes by the name of Londo, AKA. So tailored. AKA. Londo Esco. Bars, Bars, AKA. Watch your back, cuz. We ain't watching for you. We mm. looking to the left, to the right, but never behind us because your ass was never in sight. Bad vision. You know what? Ooh. Like I like that one. Yeah, I like okay. That one. okay. I like that one. You know what I'm saying? Um, my name is Alonzo Ashley Oliver. If you're looking for me, I am the host with the mostest. And uh, this is the number one conversation platform out right now. Factual. Today. You know what I mean? Check the receipts. Exactly. And this middle child sitting in the beautiful beige <laughs> polo he goes by the name of mike styles you know who it is man m-i-k-e-s-t-y-l-e-s you rocking with the best Woo. we got now we not next mm. how y'all doing hey bro good hold for just a moment i like that shirt did you knit that yeah. Um, yes. Underwater crochet. I love it. Seventh grade. <laughs> I, lo- I, I love it. I love it, bro. I don't like it. I love it. Shout out to Miss Nesbitt. You said under. Is that a thing? Underwater crochet? Or is that the uh, underwater basket weaving. Okay. You do it underwater? Really? Yeah, I think it's a thing. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I heard it in a joke once. Oh, okay. And yeah, it just stuck. Yeah. Thank you. I like that. Yeah, so we're, like, we're like we're full like, of compliments. I think it's the I think it's the room. The energy the in here. Yeah, normally we're talking a lot like of shit. All these plants is definitely blocking out the five G. Like <laughs> I can focus. I'm having an ego death. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all take it from here. You want this so bad. <laughs> well, look. Without further ado, we bring to you the lovely Miss Chelsea Erickson. How you doing today? I'm so good. How are you guys? Great. Good. Doing very well. So very well. Chelsea, I'm not sure if you're familiar um, with this platform. Hmm. Um, we're more than just good looking gentlemen, distinguished gentlemen. Um, we like to allow our guests um, to talk their, speak their truth and talk their shit. Hmm. Um, we want to give you your flowers. We already got the plants in here today, but we want right. to give you your flowers. <laughs> um, and nothing is, nothing is off brand. You know what I mean? Um, you can curse. If, Thank you. If there's something you said that you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, just say edit point. No, I'm not editing the shit. <laughs> if no, you, this is pure authenticity. If right you here. say something, yeah. you live we're, with it. You, you, you're you're hanging yourself we're with here. whatever you say, both of y'all. <laughs> you know me. Nah, uh uh-uh. uh. I'm here. Nope. I'm, mm-mm. We're here. We're in it. We're I ain't ready. editing shit. <laughs> so, yeah, what, what's, what's been going on? What's new? Oh, my gosh. Like, there's so much that's new. Um, Well, currently right now, I would say that the biggest things that's new for me is I've kind of been starting to transition a little bit with my, the things that I'm doing as far as my events that I'm doing. So I've been working in corporate events for the past 10 years, doing events and marketing. Um, And I kind of decided that for me, I've been working for a lot of these companies, um, learning events, learning marketing. And one big thing that I really wanted to do is I wanted to take the experience that I've learned for these companies and really put it back into my community Mm. Um, and really put it back in a way where I'm uplifting my community and and really just the energy of the city. Um, And so a lot of the events that I'm doing have everything to do with like spirituality, poetry, Mm. music expression, art. Um, I do a lot of sound baths. The most recent thing that I'm doing, I'm planning a retreat right now for the fall that's going to be at uh, Maple Grove Hot Springs, which is in Idaho. Um, So that's kind of what's new. I feel like I've been so busy lately working my full-time job and then kind of doing all this on the side, but it's really been taking off. I'm super grateful um, to be able to kind of have the opportunity to do that. Dope. Dope. Now you said 
what kind of bath? A sound bath? Sound bath, yeah, a, yeah, You know yeah. what a sound bath is? Yeah. yeah. So with the bowls, right? Yeah, with yeah. crystal yeah. singing bowls. Y'all know way more than me. I guess I need a- <laughs> You gotta get in touch with your mind, body, yeah. and soul, Wanda. Bro, I'm in touch with uh, everything about yeah. myself. I guess just not enough. I, 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 have a, <laughs> yeah. I have a confession. Yes. So my wife is These are my confessions. similar stuff yes. as you. She's a Reiki yeah. master. She uh-huh. has a little spot, actually not too far from here. Yeah. Um, her and her mom and their other business partner, um, they've been busy, um, relatively busy the last like probably like four to six weeks um and how i know is because they do it on the same nights as that we do the podcast but i have a confession i have never taken full advantage of um reiki or wow. crystal healing or any of that stuff really? i know your wife has went in a couple sessions with yep. um melissa mm-hmm. um so it's funny it's kind of ironic that i'm here um with you today that is really you know interesting what I mean? i'm really shocked honestly yeah people pay a lot of money yeah. to get that yeah. kind of stuff done <laughs> yeah. and you literally have like yeah. free access to it well, one, in your house one time i was um i was sick like as a dog like a just a virus sickness and my wife was like you was like how you were breathing, like it just wasn't, it, I, you were asleep, but it just didn't feel right. She's like, so I gave you some Reiki yeah. in the middle of the night. Uh-huh. She's like, I'm not supposed to. You're <laughs> yeah, not, you're, not, you're, you're not supposed to, but, but she, you're also her husband. Yeah. So I feel like it's totally fine. Yeah, but she said it regulated my breathing and I started sleeping yeah. like normally. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so we're, I, we're I, here and uh, hopefully yeah. you can, you know, allow me in, in your presence and your, in your beautiful home to have this ego death. <laughs> You know it might not happen right here, but I am here to guide you along the way. But yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for coming. So, so talk a little bit about, um, you said you're going to do the retreat where? Maple? It's called Maple Grove Hot Springs. Okay. So it's actually this beautiful land. It's like past Logan, three hours from here. It's just crazy. Like I can't even explain to you. So this is, I just barely went again. This is my third time going there. The last time I went, I went on a little solo retreat and I was just in the hot springs. Met this like super just like you meet the coolest people there it's the coolest vibe the hot springs are unique because they don't have sulfur so you know how some hot springs mm-hmm. smell really bad so they don't have any sulfur um and it's right next to the bear river so you're just soaking in the springs looking at the bear river it's beautiful um but yeah like i said last time i was there i met some people who were just sitting in the hot springs and i was i was literally sitting there and i was like i'm gonna do a retreat here like i'm gonna do a retreat here that's it. And then it just, everything manifested from there. Wow. Yeah. That's dope. That's that's, powerful. Yeah, that's a lot. So how many events have you put on that are kind of this similar uh, process, I guess? Wow. So I've done a lot of retreats for other corporate companies. Mm. Um, this is the first retreat that I'm actually doing for myself, oh. um, which is really exciting. Yeah, I've worked for huge companies where I literally have taken... Um, their consultants to Mexico, um, Dominican Republic, all Mm. of these places and through these incentives and retreats for them. And so being able to take what I've learned there to be able to put it into myself, my business, my community, my friends. I have so many friends that are part of the spiritual community and have so many gifts to offer and be able to take my gifts and put money in their pockets to me is just so cool. I love it. That's super cool. Yeah. What's the premise of the actual retreat then? Like what's the the overall purpose yeah. for it? So it's mind, body, spirit. Um, so I work a lot with the mind. I'm a union life coach. So mm. I learned how to do shadow work. So I just like have to tell you the last six months, I say this all the time. The last three years have been the most transformational years of my entire life. But the last six months have been like a giant leap. And a lot of that contributes to learning shadow work. And when I was in this course, I was having shadow work done, like I was doing shadow work and then I was guiding other teachers and students Mm. through shadow work as well. And so being able to learn how to do that, I feel like has just really, it's helped me tremendously um, in my life. And so that has a lot to do with mind because we can clear our energetic field, we can do Reiki, we can heal our body. But if you still have thought patterns that have certain beliefs, mm. um, there's nothing like you You can do all of these things, but until you fix your mind and your thought patterns and your beliefs, you're still gonna see the same results. Mm. So I truly feel like you have to encompass mind. Um, and then, like I said, body, we're taking acupuncturist. She, um, is, she's a doctor, Chinese medicine. Like she's amazing, um, does acupuncture. So she really helps you heal the body. Mm. And then my friend and business partner, Matt, he does reading. So he's Mm. intuitive. He connects with spirit. And so he does a lot of readings and Reiki as well. And so he really helps people can, um, heal on a spiritual level. So mind, body, and spirit, um, we're going to do like 
soaking sound baths, cold plunges, yoga, acupuncture, sharing. Uh, it's going to be a vibe. Wow. I need all of that. <laughs> I need all of that. <laughs> Sign me up now. Take my money. Um, you can have it. So, but with that, for those who don't know, kind of define shadow work a little bit more. Yeah. Just yes. so we get a better Please. understanding. Because I, I honestly don't know what it is. I'd love to because I feel like shadow work is life changing. I feel so like, like this, hold on. I feel like this on some uh, Miss Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but, that, but that's great because I'm, 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 we are building a uh, multiverse right now. Right. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little later. Yeah, yeah. I'll fill you guys in on that. <laughs> <sighs> um, yeah, so the, the best thing that I can describe is shadow work is that. It's funny you say you want to have an ego death. Mm -hmm. um, it has so much to do with the ego. Yeah. But it's so funny because, you know, a lot of the music we grew up on um, is like, I have a big ego. I want to have a big ego, mm -hmm. like all these things. And now everyone's trying to eliminate, eliminate their ego. But the cool thing about shadow work is that you don't eliminate your ego. You integrate your shadow into your ego so you can live authentically. So mm -hmm. I'll give you a really easy example of um, shadow work. So let's say that like you grew up in your life and you were constantly told like, saying no is mean. Don't say no, that's mean, that's rude, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So anytime there were situations in your life that presented to you and you wanted to say no, you didn't say no because you got it engraved in your mind that saying no is mean. Mm -hmm. So then you end up people pleasing, doing things that you don't want to, saying yes to everybody, spreading yourself thin, and what shadow work does is it helps you identify why do you say yes? Maybe you are a people pleaser. What's this persona? What ideas are you attached to in your mind? And then you can integrate saying no in a healthy way because what happens is when you have a shadow and you don't nurture your shadow, it grows. Mm. So that's the darkness that we Shit. experience mm -hmm. in light, in life. And so if you start integrating from your shadow, your shadow isn't huge and it doesn't control your life. I also learned from a shaman in kind of a different practice that that shadows are your triggers and that people can control you with your shadow. So if you have a big shadow, because the thing is, is that if someone, so if you're a people pleaser, let's go back to that. And you say no to someone, um, you know, that to you, that's mean. So if someone says no to you, that's mean. So that triggers you, right? Mm. So now all of a sudden you're allowing people to hurt you by saying no or Ooh, setting boundaries okay. because you learned that that's mean. So integrating this into your life also doesn't allow people to control you mm -hmm. with their actions as well. It's honestly life changing. Shit. <laughs> yeah. It's um, kind of like the concept of, um, when people put a mirror in front of you. Exactly. Like very, very, very similar. Like you get to see everything about you and some people don't like to look in the mirror. 100%. And that's what it is. That's what our triggers are. They're mirrors. And whether it's a mirror of something that you don't like about yourself or a mirror of something you do, they even say admiration is triggered. Mm. So if you look at someone and you really admire them, there's parts of yourself in that shadow that you haven't allowed yourself to be. Mm. Um, I just did a shadow session with one of my really good friends that was also in the course and she was really triggered by um, over-sexualization of women and certain things like that. Now, not to say that that's not a problem or anything like that, but if someone's triggered by it, you don't look at the problem, you look within and see why. Mm -hmm. And part of it was because there was parts of her that wanted to be sexy or beautiful or seen in that way that she learned were bad. Mm -hmm. So do you understand that when we mm -hmm. learn, you know, we ha we learn all these things growing up and then we, we identify them as good or bad and then we're triggered based off of those identifications. And I do have to say, Carl Jung, um, he's the one that kind of he came up with shadow work he used to work with freud he's a philosopher so mm -hmm. wow you preaching yeah. right now she preaching <laughs> um so going going back to the retreat yeah um i did see an instagram post you're looking very um pretty thank you is that the good is that, is that the right word fellas <laughs> like, i don't want to over sexualize anything beautiful <laughs> You were looking beautiful. Yeah, Thank you were looking you. stunning. Body. You were looking amazing. Yeah. My energy Body. was You're shining. Eclectic. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you said that you were getting rid of addiction and you know a, a number of things. You want to touch on the Instagram post? Yeah. Because I I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, I seen it and I'm like, what could she be struggling with? Because every time I see you out and about. It's like one of four events for you and you're always showing love to anybody that's moving and shaking in the city. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, gosh, I like I've been on a journey. Um, I've been on a journey my entire life. Like I can't. It's too much for one podcast. But I definitely um, through my life as I was developing, I picked up really bad habits um, based on 
being attracted to, like I said in my post, like unavailable partners, Mm -hmm. being attracted to very toxic cycles. Um, I was in a relationship for nine years from the age of 21 to 29. And there was so much beauty that came from that relationship, but there were so many cycles um, in that relationship that did not serve me and were not healthy at all. I was addicted to continuously abandoning myself for other people's approval, for other people's love. I sacrificed my needs to please other people. Um, And those are some of the addictions that I talk about. It's, it's, It's so weird because I feel like as humans, we we really come up with these ideas that like, this is the way that the world needs to work based off of our upbringing and, you know, our relationships and stuff, but there's so much more to it. Um, and I really learned that when you're putting energy into things that don't serve you, you're draining your energy, you're draining your battery, you're draining your light. But if you truly learn how to live authentically and you put your energy into very fulfilling relationships with yourself, um, with anything that brings you joy and makes you feel good, then you will level up always. And that's why I believe in energy. Cause if you think you have a conversation with someone and you walk away feeling awful versus having a conversation with someone, you walk away feeling wonderful. That's energy. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why I believe in it. Cause there's proof <clears throat> of it around us every single day. Yeah. Um, so I would just say like a lot of it is just certain relationship patterns that I was really addicted to. Like mm. I really liked someone who was unavailable because I had to work for it. I had to earn it. I had mm. to earn love because I, and I love my parents so much, but I was raised in certain dynamics where I had to earn love. Mm. And so I continued that in relationships with people who wanted me to earn their love. Mm. And those are the type of things that I've learned to break and to um, really overcome in my life wow it's deep uh, well, guys, <laughs> i get <fine>. deep <laughs> no nah, so we we like to go deep here you know oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very intrigued you know by your story and appreciate you being open and honest and i hope everyone that's listening you know is gaining some things from this uh so appreciate you sharing for one yeah you know that that's awesome uh and i, I can relate a lot and there was a question i wanted to ask you earlier um based on what you were saying with shadow work was i feel like um the question really comes down to it's like, not why are you like this, but like what happened to you? Yes. So I'm not sure if you're familiar. Have you checked out that book by yes. Oprah? Yes. Uh huh. Yep. Yes. I've read so it. So I'm yeah. about halfway through, and somehow I don't finish books. But yeah. I get halfway. I learn everything. <laughs> I learn everything I need by yeah. chapter six, and yeah. I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. purpose. But yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, a it's great just book. like what yeah. happened to you. I think is the question we need yes. to start asking each other, hmm. um, rather than like why are you like this? Yes. Mm-hmm. Why do you do this? etc so uh, i'm glad that you're sharing that and that you share that same subject because i think that's very important uh, yeah and you know your trauma healing so, yeah so. thank you and i do think that when we start approaching people with compassion and understanding that it is a little bit more of like you're looking at things as not what you've done to me but what happened to you that makes you have those patterns and you have those cycles because the same way where i've had patterns and cycles that i didn't realize other people have those too and a lot of it has to do with our upbringing Mm. i also believe in generational trauma that's Mm. passed down in families as well and so we're born not you know we don't ask for well some believe that we kind of know and we're coming down to do this work but you know, as this human form, we're not asking for this. And so to be able to truly have compassion and understand what people are going through can can really help you in not taking things so personally. So with all of this, yes, it's not easy. Can you talk about the struggle that comes along with trying to live this journey? Because Dude. it's <laughs> <laughs> that, that shadow is for as minimal as you can make it. It's, we're human. It yes. still comes out. It still grasps. It still puts you in positions to where you do have thoughts that aren't conducive to growth or to where you're trying to go. So how do you balance that out? And can you talk about the struggle that comes along with this? Oh I my gosh, I don't yeah. think people think about that side of it. Well, it's funny when you start doing shadow work, you put other things in your shadow, right? So let's say that you don't want to be a people pleaser anymore and you start saying no to no. everyone. People pleasers Fuck y'all, trigger no. you. <laughs> and people, pleasers, people pleasers trigger me because I used to be a people pleaser. I have people in my life that I love so dearly that have characteristics that I used to have and it mm. triggers the fuck out of mm. me. And now that Talk I- that inter- shit. 
it, I've integrated these parts of myself, you're constantly doing shadow work. It's just about yeah. like, it's honestly mm -hmm. about having awareness and understanding why is someone triggering me mm -hmm. and not pointing the finger at other people. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some shitty people out there and it's not saying that they're not doing anything bad. It's just that if someone could have like, you know, could interact with me. So your interaction, you said, you know, I'm always supporting, I'm always mm -hmm. out like happy whatever mm -hmm. someone else could have a different perspective perspective of me mm -hmm. i can't control that it's yeah. all based off of their experiences and their mm -hmm. perspectives so at the end of the day i would say that there's a to answer your question the hardest thing about shadow work is looking in the mirror mm -hmm. and acknowledging your faults and not being a victim hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on no more making excuses well, mike what'd you say last time you said you yeah take yeah take that drink man mm. um cheers up cheers up y'all mine's mine's gone mm. you know what i'm saying i went on a bridge. oh here you go um oh, oh shit got oh, she got oh, an old day yeah, okay yeah, she got yeah, so um, you know, I went on a mini sabbatical. I think my shadow was telling me to drink too much. <laughs> yeah, that can happen when See? you're suppressing things. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah, man. So, um, so Chelsea, this is great. This conversation is really great. I'm really like, I'm, I'm really someone that like, I have to be like stimulated. Yeah. Like, so for the fellas watching, because there's there's people watching. Mm -hmm. How do you? I got it. Um, how do you? Um, so how do you want to be courted? Is that the right word? Is that oh, the right word I'm looking for? Yeah. How would you want to be courted? Because, oh my you know gosh. That's a good use of word. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you, how would, how do you, for the listeners, like how do you court somebody that is just so um, spiritually awoken? Uh, awoken? Goodness, I would say authenticity. Okay. Like I would say that's the biggest <clears throat> thing because I can really feel energy. I've been really tapping in. So I actually do card readings and things like that. I've been really working on meditation and channeling and tapping into my intuition. I've always been extremely intuitive. Um, but we live in a society where if someone doesn't like your idea of the truth, they'll tell you otherwise. So mm. it's been a process for me to work through and to tap into my intuition. Um, and I would say that one of the biggest turnoffs when I'm dating is I can feel when someone's not authentic. I can mm. feel when someone's coming at me from like a place of need. I would say that the best way to court me is to do your self work and go on your journey. Mm. And when you're ready, then approach me Ooh. and we can grow together. Ah. Fellas, fellas, look, <laughs> let me tell you something. Bars. Let me tell you something as a man who's in a happy, healthy relationship, she preaching. Let me tell you, she's preaching. Bars. Work on yourself. But like on some more, on some more like, um, because I still am, I am very spiritual. I love like, you know, down to earth things, but at the same time, I'm a little bougie. I have to admit it. Yeah. Like I like material you like what you things like, yeah. too. And so I would say it, like, in addition to that is like somebody who can come to, not necessarily, it's not all about money, but it's about also creativity and courting in a way of like, you know, coming up with activities or things that are outside of the box okay. that are a little bit different. Um, I had this guy ask me out on a date and he invited me to the park, brought me coffee okay. and we walked okay. around the park and drank coffee and talked. And I thought that was a beautiful idea. Like I, because it's, it's authentic. It's, it's, um, you know, you're, you're taking time to actually get to know someone. Mm -hmm. Um, Miguel will take you on a bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do. I do have a road bike. I do we gotta stop. Uh, we gotta stop hoeing them out. Miguel really has women. <laughs> I know he does. He does. He does. He got I know women. he does. He does. Everybody, he's like he's, he's like over here, like, but this boy, yeah, out he, here he's over it. here. Look, I feel like he's lately. He's been like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, I got Pidu You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I am struggling with though? I think because, because I am so into like, my, and this sounds crazy, maybe saying out loud, but like into myself and my work and just like what I'm nope, doing right it. now, I am having such a hard time finding interest in people just in general, because I just feel mm. like I'm so passionate and excited about what I'm doing. And I don't feel like. I don't feel like anything is like equivalent to that excitement that, that I'm experiencing. You, you got to stay. If so, if things are energizing you, that doesn't require other people. Like I feel like that's the the best position mm -hmm. that you can possibly that's, be. That's in. a fact. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. I think that's another part of those areas where it's can be a struggle in this journey. We have this platform that we use, and I often get busy to where I can't show up. 
And it's not that I don't want to show up. It's just that what I'm doing at that moment is more purposeful for me at that moment. And I have to focus on that. So I get it. It's hard to say no, but these are also my guys. I have responsibilities to them and our brand. So it's always this constant, how do I manage time properly to make sure that I'm filling my cup the way that it needs to be filled? Mm -hmm. Because this does that for me in a specific way as well. But sometimes I have to put this on the side to do other things that fill that same cup. Right. Yeah. It's all about balance. It is about balance. Life in general is about balance. It, you know, like something else that um, I've been thinking a lot about lately is just like duality in life, like darkness and light mm. and how... Talk this shit. I've been watching uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Really? <laughs> the dark side. <laughs> no, for real, when you... No, you're telling me all this and I'm like, yo, is is the, the shadow the dark side? Yeah, well, but, the, but the, here's the thing. You know what's the crazy thing is, is that without darkness, you can't experience light. Ooh. 100%. So without, so you can't, like, it's like if literally all you knew was like warm water, you wouldn't know what cold water <laughs> felt like. Or if all you knew was cold water, you wouldn't know what warm water felt like. Like that. without darkness, Make it plain. Darkness, Make it plain. Let's, let's keep it simple. Joy, pain. Yeah. <laughs> Sunshine <laughs> and rain. Yeah. Come on, like, look, let's take it back. Let's take it back. Yeah, no, you have to. You, you have to walk in the dark to know what a sun that's, that's sunrise a bar. looks like. And you know, that's the hardest thing. Again, going back to why shadow work is so difficult. Like they, so in the spiritual community, we talk about a dark night of the soul, and it's when you go through an ego death mm -hmm. or a very extremely dark time where you've been attached to a certain identity. And you're losing that attachment. So my mm. ego death was my relationship of nine years because I was Shit. so attached to him, mm. who we were as a couple. My whole identity was wrapped up into him. I was still always like, you know, working and doing all those things, but so much of my identity was wrapped up in him. And when our relationship, because it was built on a faulty foundation, started to crumble, mm. I went to the darkest places I've ever experienced in my entire life. And that's why they say like the Phoenix rising, like from that darkness that I experienced, I'm talking like going to the bathroom, crying at work, like Shit, couldn't man. even like function darkness. Like I was the most depressed, like in the most depressing state, I chose not to take medication. I chose to really like go into the darkness. And once I came out of that, I feel like I am the most like I've, I experienced the most light I've ever experienced in my whole entire life. But during that time, I also had to do inner child work. I had to deal with trauma from my childhood. There were so many things that came up that I had to look at and work through. But anyone that I ever work through, whether I'm working with like energy work or coaching, I always tell them the only way out is through. That's mm. the only way out. So with that, that's very interesting because I, I'm a person who came from a lot of you know darkness and things like that and traumas, et cetera. Do you ever struggle now that you're in the light for what may feel like longer periods of time than you're used to? Like being like, oh, I'm not used to this. Like yeah. I'm used to the trauma. I'm used to the hard parts of it and kind of be like, where's it at? When yeah. is it coming? Does uh -huh. that ever come and creep in your mind? 100%. And how do you handle that? And so. Oh gosh. So it does a lot of the time, like there's still certain things. So for example, um, like I grew up very poor. Um, I grew up with a single mom. We didn't have a lot. We did the best that we could. Um, I've always, which in turn has made me extremely motivated. I'm very money motivated. I've always been, um, somebody who's like, where's like the next opportunity, um, and with that, I've been able to build a lot of success in my life. And sometimes I come to these moments where I realize like, oh shit, like what happened if I would like lose everything? But then I ask myself, what happened if I would lose everything? And I step into that fear and into that mm -hmm. darkness and my identity is not attached to my success. My identity is not attached to my happiness. My identity is attached to I'm just me. I'm a full faceted human being that experiences life. I experience light. I experience darkness and I'm okay with that. And I love myself through that. And I've already been through all of this. If anything else ever comes up in my life, I'll get through that too. Wow. Amen.